Long before we had Lionel's or Thomas Trains or Wooden Trains or any of that, there was this. Welcome to Grampy's Train Room. This is where I grew up, where I got hooked on this stuff. And this was my son's first introduction to model trains too, so let's give you a little tour of the train room. This is a pretty big layout, and it takes quite a bit to power it. But I'm also a fan of how you power it on, because things were built in stages and there's electric switches for just about everything. And I'm kind of glad it's not all just one big thing you turn on. I do like flipping on all the different sections individually. If you're trying to get an idea of how big these trains are, these are larger than HO, larger than Lionel. This is a garden size scale. These are G-scale trains. Uh, we got started with them because my dad got us a Playmobil set. G-scale tracks, to give you an idea, are one inch and three quarters wide. It's about 1 25th scale, so these are not small trains. There's a lot of great variety to the collection of trains my dad has here. A lot of these are even secondhand, and he tinkers and works on them. Gee, I wonder where I got that idea from. But there's a lot of cool variety here, and it's fun running different trains, especially this guy, because we have Shining Time Station. Because I was a kid in the 90s, and I love trains, so it was impossible not to be completely head over heels about Thomas and Friends. And this one, actually, I picked up. We never had a Thomas G-Scale train, but I picked this up for my son to enjoy around the layout. But while we didn't have a Thomas when I was growing up, my dad did get us James. And this is actually a older Lionel G-Scale engine. He works okay. Uh, he's had a bit of a rough life, but uh, the eyes move back and forth. There's different face plates you can put on there to change the expression. And it's really fun getting the two of these together, running around the layout. I mentioned before that a bunch of these trains are secondhand, and sometimes that means they don't work. And in this case, that's fine because we just took out the gearbox and made this little Lionel Santa Fe engine a roller because my son loves moving the trains back and forth. My dad actually put in this siding here and he even made a platform for him to stand on so he can just move the trains back and forth on the siding and watch the electric ones go by. He loves this spot in the layout. It's a lot of fun to watch the wheels go around. He's just kind of fascinated with that. And then also to enjoy watching his friends go around the layout right in front of him. There are tons of details packed into this big layout. And it's always fun seeing something else that he's added or finding something else that I hadn't even noticed before. But the details that go through this thing come from years upon years of tinkering with it. And it really just proves that you're never really truly done with the train set. Prominently featured at the edge of the layout is this big, beautiful Victorian house that kind of overlooks everything. And my son really likes playing with this one. I know that we put this in mostly for my sister, and that's fine, but playing with the Playmobil figures while watching the trains go by, especially since the switch yards are close by, this is one of the best places to watch the trains go by from. My dad built a kind of fold-out stool for the kids to stand on so that way they can play with this more easily. It's been great seeing him incorporate in elements to make it easier for the grandkids to enjoy. Speaking of grandkids, I'm sure my parents love it as much as I do, but this train hat that my son is wearing was actually mine when I was a kid. We got this at Clark's Trading Post in New Hampshire when we lived out there, and it's just really fun watching him enjoy these trains with the same hat that I did all those years ago. This layout has gone through a lot of changes. In its current state, it's really only been like this really for the last five or six years, I think. I have to do a little bit of sleuthing on that one, but it originally was two large ovals on separate tables that were joined with a set of electronic switches at the very end of them. So you could make one gigantic loop or you could have two separate ovals going on. And we had a city side and a kind of Western themed side where I had all my cowboys and Indians and Civil War guys. But the current state that it's in now is all I really have videos and pictures of. It would have been neat to show you the old layout, but really the amount of detail that's in this now and the complexity of track layout and all the switches and everything, it's a whole nother step above what it used to be. My son and I spend a lot of time looking at other videos of O-Gage layouts and such and getting ideas on how to make our model train. But all my ideas for really doing what we're doing at our house with the secondhand overland started here. And that love for model trains that I have started here. And it's been really fun handing that down to my son and watching him enjoy it and 
being part of it. I love the memories I made with my dad enjoying these trains together. And it's my hope that when he grows up and has his own kids, he'll look back and enjoy his time with his kids with their trains, thinking of me. I know that sounds sappy, but it is really rewarding working with the next generation of model railroaders, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Did that train hit your hat? Yeah. You gotta be careful around the rails. Remember, when you buy railroad tracks, safety first. 